My name is Dan Norton, and I'm the Chief Creative Officer at Filament Games. Filament is a design and development shop that focuses uh, exclusively on making learning games. I'm Brandon Pitzer, I'm the Marketing Director here at Filament Games. We have two sides of our business. We make games for other clients, that's our custom development business, and then we also have a publishing unit uh, where we release games that we've made and that other developers have made, and we uh, promote and sell those games to schools, uh, so K-12 institutions, uh, classrooms, uh, libraries, um, other educational environments. All three founding partners were working at a online learning research center, actually, and that was here in Madison. We've always been in Madison. Uh, we were founded uh, 10 years ago. Actually, it came out of a program at uh, the UW Madison. That organization became affiliated with a UW Madison research group who was investigating games and learning uh, academically. Uh, we realized there was an opportunity to take that research and start making stuff. Um, so we did. We felt that the current state of learning games was not optimal, um, the, that, that games could be so much more than how they are being used in the classroom today, and uh, basically set out to change that and, and create games that are much more robust and serious teaching tools. So yeah, 107 games is a lot, um, and they've been across a massive spectrum of of sizes and, and scope, um, target age groups and content areas. We almost made a prototype, well no, we made the prototype, we almost made a full project uh, VR game about learning how to weld. And that would have been the coolest, right? Because I mean, I'd like to know how to weld. You know, you look at one of our, like one of our kind of primary uh, clients, iCivics, um, just for that, just for them alone, we've made over two dozen games. Um, that go into the iCivics platform, and are, which is massively successful and is adopted in all 50 states and has thousands and thousands of students and teachers using it every day. It's a lot of games. You know, they've, they've varied in size and shape, and uh, yeah, it's been fun. I think that uh, without naming any names, I think there are a lot of very poor educational games out in circulation that are freely available, and because they're free, they're poor. We started the company based on the idea that even commercial games, entertainment games, the thing that actually makes them engaging and the reason people play them is because they're interesting learning experiences. When people say fun, they really mean that they're given an interesting problem to try and understand, grapple with, and get better at, and ultimately master. In the learning games world, um, the, the metaphor of chocolate-covered broccoli is often used, um, meaning that we're taking a very boring thing, like drilling addition or drilling multiplication tables, and then we're putting some very rudimentary game mechanics on top of that and calling it a game. Um, and that to us is not what game-based learning is. That's, that is uh, lazy. We build our games from the ground up around the idea of meeting a very specific learning goal like we want you to learn something in particular and we want that thing that you learn to be of value and usable once the game's been turned off. And that's sort of the big differentiator. I think that's one thing is that the people who are truly bought in and the people who truly um, truly adopt and use what we have, uh, whether, it's, whether it's in a classroom, whether it's in a corporate learning environment, if we're making games for, for a corporation that wants to train up their sales force, which we've done too, um, they, they know that there's an authenticity to the play that's happening um, that is actually delivering the content and the learning objectives in a meaningful way. Someone sent me a video of a little girl who created a walkthrough video for our game Win the White House. And she was explaining how to be good at Win the White House. And in her act of explaining how to be great at this game, she more or less was describing the Electoral College and the election process like piece by piece. We were given an award for Reach for the Sun, which is a game we made about uh, plant anatomy and function, and it was given to us by the Joan Gans Cooney Foundation, and that was a, their inaugural year for that. We won that developer prize, and that was a, it was really kind of cool to have us be the, the first. You know, it was kind of nice that they're like, you know, we want to establish a a benchmark for what kind of thing that gets an award like this and they chose us and that was uh, that was a big honor. 
there's a strong push now uh, at, at the school level and at the education level to infuse students with 21st century skills. 21st century skills include things like critical thinking, problem solving, collaboration, and technical literacy. So can you use a keyboard? Can you click and drag with a mouse? Stuff like that is now part of curriculum because it's it's become a core tool to survive in the working world. And so the further we go along that path, the more relevant what we're doing here will become. It's awesome. It's an awesome thing. Making games, like I think, has a lot of obvious benefits. People love the act of making games for many people is pleasurable, right? So that's that just making stuff is fun. Uh, playing stuff is fun. You know, I think a lot of I think a lot of People who go into making games start with a passion for playing them, and then it takes them a little while to unlock the passion, which specifics or discipline or passion they have for making stuff. The actual impact of play for us is, is like one extra step of reward. So it's not necessarily just amount of copies purchased, but yeah, we can actually go out and see real impact in people's. People have been transformed uh, and had a positive impact from playing our stuff, and that's that's super cool, and I know I know a lot of people on the team get a lot of value out of that. It's a lot of fun to work. At. We uh, we're always making something weird and interesting. Our tagline at Filament Games is "Real Games, Real Learning," and I think it's a brilliant encapsulation of of what we're trying to accomplish in the world. Is that we don't shortchange either side of that equation. The games that we make are authentically instructive while being authentically entertaining, um, which is a difficult balance to strike and it's something that, it's a challenge that we embrace every single day. I made most of my decisions in my career off of this and so far it's worked out. So uh, don't be bored.